In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this Ali Abdal mask for yourself in Apple Motion. And if you don't have Apple Motion or you just wanna skip all the steps we're gonna go over, there's a download link below where you can download this template for yourself for free. But for those of you new here, my name's Daniel Languish. Uh, I enjoy making Apple Motion Final Cut Pro content. And so if you guys think you might enjoy that, consider subscribing. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, Ali Abdal is one of the most popular productivity YouTubers out there. I absolutely love his content. He does awesome work. And if you've seen some of his latest videos, then you'll have seen this mask that he's been using in his videos where he's got this uh, little light glow that's moving around the mask. And I think it's simple. Uh, subtle yet looks so clean. Now I immediately loved this mask and then I saw someone on Reddit ask, how would you make something like this in Apple Motion? And so I immediately got to work and guys, I think we've come pretty darn close. I think you're gonna like how this turned out. So you ready to learn? Let's jump into it. So we're gonna start with opening up Apple Motion. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is a final cut effect. And then over in the settings, you're gonna to wanna to choose uh, whatever frame rate you shoot at. Uh, I'm gonna do 30 frames per second. And then for this animation, I think 11 seconds works well. So let's go with that. And now with Apple Motion open, the very first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is to create the mask that he uses, that kind of rounded rectangle mask. And to do that, we're gonna start off by going and creating a rectangle. So you can just click on the rectangle and draw any size rectangle you want here. It doesn't really matter because then we're gonna go over and we're gonna to go to the inspector of your rectangle go to properties, and then on the right side of the transform here, we're gonna just reset the parameter. That just resets the position to make sure the position is in the center. And then we're gonna go over to shape and we're gonna kind of resize uh, our shape a little bit. We're gonna go to shape and then geometry, go to size. And then what I found looked pretty good in my opinion was a width of 600 and a height of 800. But again, adjust it to whatever you think looks good. And then finally, you saw he had that roundness on the mask. So this that's where roundness here is gonna come in. And again, I thought 29 worked pretty well. And so there you go, we've got our first rectangle. But now, if you remember, his mask around the image kind of had a glow around it. So we're gonna actually wanna duplicate this rectangle and make it so that it's just the outline so that we can get that glow. And you'll understand why we do this a little bit later. So we jump in and we're gonna go to our rectangle and we are going to duplicate it. And let's just rename this uh, rectangle glow. That might help us remember it a little better. And then we're gonna go over to style and we're gonna deselect fill and then select outline. And so now this is an outlined rectangle. Um, and for the width, we're gonna change it to one. Uh, we can leave everything else uh, as that settings right now. That should be good. Now you'll remember that the, for a mask, you gotta have the image be inside of the rectangle, right? So how we're gonna do that is this effect source here. That's basically your image. That's the video of yourself. And so we wanna put that effect source inside of our rectangle. And to do that, we're gonna right click on the effect source and we're gonna go down and hit add image mask. And you can also hit shift command M there to do it quicker. And it's gonna add an image mask to this effect source. And over here, we've got a mask source. And this is where you're gonna to wanna to drag your rectangle into that source. And you'll notice immediately now, the effect source is inside of the rectangle. We've got a mask. And now before we get into the fun stuff, we're gonna do a couple more tweaks uh, to just get our rectangle looking good. And you'll remember uh, there, there's a little bit of kind of almost a blur, a glow that he has around the border. And so to do that, so we're gonna click on our rectangle glow and we're gonna go up here to filters. There's a lot of awesome filters up here. Uh, the first one we're gonna go down to is go to glow and we're gonna choose outer glow. And uh, you'll see it adds kind of a glow there. We can change the colors. Again, can do whatever you like. Uh, in his video, I think he used kind of a bluish color. Uh, so we're gonna make the inner and outer glow this blue color. So for the second one, I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna grab the little color picker and go up and match my blues. And so now, uh, it's got a nice little uh, blue outer glow here. And I'm gonna tweak uh, just one more setting. I'm gonna increase the radius to four. You can make it whatever uh, looks good to you. 
Uh, now you might be looking at it and think that looks kind of harsh, and I agree. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna now to this outer glow, add a filter, and we're gonna add a Gaussian blur, just to soften it up a bit. And for this Gaussian blur, again, do whatever you like, but I'm gonna increase this up to 17. And this adds a nice little just fuzz uh, to our outline. So now we've got this rectangle glow, but now's where the fun begins. Uh, Cause now we get to create that little moving glowing particle that was going around the frame of the mask. And honestly, the part that makes it look the most cool. So let's jump into that. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go down and we're just gonna create a random little circle. So I'm gonna hold a shift, just make a little perfect circle here. And the only thing I'm gonna adjust with this circle is I'm just gonna add a little bit of feather. I'm gonna feather it like 16 or something like that. And now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create something that can actually uh, make things from this circle. And that's what we call an Apple motion in emitter. So we're gonna, with circle selected, go up and click make particles. And that's gonna create an emitter attached to this circle. And so if we hit play, you'll see it's gonna start just creating stuff. And let's actually, let's actually drag this emitter uh, all the way to the start so that you can see fully uh, what this emitter is doing. It is just creating tons of stuff. Uh, not really what we want, but don't worry, we're gonna adjust a few settings. So if we go into the emitter settings, uh, first thing we're gonna change, is we're gonna change the birth rate to 300. So that's gonna create just a, even more circle. It's gonna just go absolutely crazy. But then the key is we're gonna go to speed and we're gonna change speed to zero. And then we're gonna go to opacity over life. And we're gonna add uh, an opacity slider on the far right here and we're gonna drag it down to zero. So this means over the life of each particle created, the particle is going to fade away. And so, now all we have to do is add this emitter so that it starts moving around the border of our rectangle. Unfortunately, this is pretty easy to do. Uh, we're gonna go here and actually before we go and do that, let's change the size of this. It's a little big. I'm gonna go to scale for the emitter and change it down to 18. Uh, something nice little small like that. And so now with the emitter selected, we're gonna go to behavior and do basic motion, motion path. And once again, we're gonna to go to path shape and we are gonna to go to geometry. And geometry is pretty cool because you can now choose the path for your object to be around any other object in your image. And so for us, this is gonna be our rectangle. So we drag our rectangle into here and now you'll notice when we hit play, it starts producing a line around our rectangle, and you'll notice at the end of the line, it's fading away. Uh, looks really, really slick. Now, if you were watching right there, you're gonna notice a problem. Watch in three, two, one, there. It doesn't keep going, it resets and, and starts at the beginning, right? We want this continuous line. And so uh, I was doing a lot of exploration, but fortunately, I figured it out this is how we're gonna do it. Now, before we do any of the steps uh, to make that work, we wanna make sure we are finished with this emitter. And so uh, the, what we're gonna wanna do is just add any more uh, effects to it that we want. I think I'm gonna go to filters and I'm gonna add a uh, glow and neon effect uh, to the filter. And with this neon effect, we're gonna change the outer brightness to one. We're gonna change the inner brightness to four. We're gonna change the inner glow to zero. And we're gonna drop this outer glow basically as low as we want it. So uh, maybe put it at like, I don't know, maybe like a seven or something like that. And there you go. Now it's got just a little bit of a glow to it uh, as it moves around. I think that looks really slick. But now time to fix. Uh, so that it keeps looping around. So this is the way that I figured out how to fix this. And you might watch this and be like, Daniel, there's a way easier way. Let me know down in the comments if you know an easier way to fix this problem than what I found. But here's what I did. So I am going to go here and we are going to duplicate this emitter. So I'm gonna hit Command D, duplicate the emitter. And so we're gonna call this emitter uh, two, we'll say. Um, we're gonna rename the original to emitter one. 
And basically what we're gonna wanna do is offset the, cause the, the problem is the emitter at the very start is doing that little uh, weird beginning thing where it just starts abruptly. It doesn't have the continuous trail when it starts. See, it starts abruptly. And so what we're gonna wanna do is create duplicate emitters that are offset but overlapping exactly with that emitter so that they kind of cover each other whenever it gets to that point. And I know that probably makes no sense, but let's just do it, okay? So we make a duplicate emitter. And so for this emitter, we've got our second one. What we're gonna wanna do in the emitter is go down to the second emitter's motion path. And what we're gonna wanna do is offset this emitter by 50%. And so now you'll notice on our shape, we offset it 50%. So it's 50% way through its motion animation. So we've got kind of this cool little, you know, moving around uh, the two things moving around the border, but that's not what we want, right? We want them to be on top of each other. And so what we're gonna do is down here in our uh, little uh, workstation down here, we are gonna go to emitter two and we're gonna drag it so that it starts at 50% of our animation. So I set mine to 11 seconds. And so I'm gonna drag emitter two uh, to halfway, which for me is 515, uh, five, where the in is at 515. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate emitter two again. We'll name this emitter three. And so now that we've created emitter three, we're basically now just gonna move emitter three the other direction. So for emitter three, we are once again gonna go down to motion path. Uh, it's already offset 50%, but now what we're gonna do with emitter three is we're gonna drag emitter three so that emitter three starts the other way so that it starts, it's in is at negative 515. And this might have made no sense, but now if you watch, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Now that we have these three and they are offset, drag it a little bit bigger. Watch what happens, you start the animation and it has already got that trail because that's emitter three uh, at the beginning and then we've got emitter two. Um, and so they're like all overlapping with each other to cover uh, the weird start that they might have. And now if you wanna make it so that you can change the color of all those emitters, all you're gonna wanna do uh, for Final Cut Pro is you're gonna wanna group these all together uh, so we're going to want to just make sure uh, they are in the same group. And so we're going to drag these up into their own group here. We're going to drag emitter two into the group, emitter one into the group. And then with this group, we are then going to add a filter and we're going to go to color and we are going to colorize the filter. And so now we're gonna remap, the normal color is white, and then you can remap white to whatever color you want your thing to be. So if you want it to be green, there you go, you got a green border going around. And then what you can do is go to that colorize and you can hit here and you can publish, and now that will be published in Final Cut Pro ready for you to change in Final Cut Pro. Now before we finish, I'm gonna do a few quick things uh, to get this so that it works as good as possible in Final Cut Pro. And the first thing is to just publish the properties that you're gonna want to be able to be editable in Final Cut Pro. So for example, you might go to this rectangle glow, uh, you might publish uh, the Gaussian blur, you know, the amount of, uh, of Gaussian blur, you could publish this outer glow, you could publish the radius, I would publish the inner and outer color, uh, stuff like that. Now the next thing we're gonna wanna do is just to make it so that you can adjust uh, your frame inside of your mask and make sure you can position it right. So we're gonna go to effect source, we're gonna head on over to properties and then we are gonna publish the position. Looks like I already published it. Uh, so we'll unpublish and publish, there we go. And the final thing we might consider doing is if you wanted to change the size of the rectangle uh, for the mask, I uh, wanna be able to do that, but you'll notice right now, if I change the size of this rectangle, let's say I go here, go to shape, geometry, and I try to change the width, our our animation will go around it, but our glowing rectangle won't. And so what we're gonna wanna do for that 
is we are gonna want to link our glowing rectangle to this other one. So we're gonna go to our rectangle glow and we're gonna wanna go to the parameter that we're gonna want to be connected to the rectangle. And so when I go to this rectangle glow, uh, the first thing uh, we would wanna do is we would want the width to be connected. So let's go to width and we're gonna go click on the little arrow here, go down to add parameter behavior and we're gonna click link. And so we're gonna link this rectangle glow width to the rectangle. And so if the source parameter, we're gonna go uh, object shape and it's size width. It's already selected there. Um, so it should now when we go to the rectangle and we adjust the width, it is going to adjust our width of the glowing rectangle as well. And so what we're gonna wanna do is then go to that uh, we're gonna wanna then go to our rectangle and we are going to want to publish these parameters. So let's publish uh, the size, let's publish the width, it's already published, let's publish the height. And speaking of height, we're gonna wanna do the exact same thing for the height. So go back to rectangle glow. In geometry, we're gonna click on the height. We're gonna go add parameter behavior link. We are going to link it to our rectangle, which is shape, size, height, and then they will be connected. And there you have it, guys. That is how you make this Ali Abdal animation for yourself in Apple Motion. Super slick. I hope you guys are able to use it in your projects. And if you found this video helpful, drop a like below. Uh, if you subscribe, you're gonna be able to stay up to date on the Apple Motion content that I'm putting out, the templates that I'm creating. And if you guys enjoyed this video, I've got another video here talking about how to make a clean, modern lower third in Apple Motion. It's a lower third that I think looks really nice in your videos. It's got a free template as well. So that video is linked right here and I will see you in that video.